Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Ten. Today's topic is torque and angular acceleration for a rigid body. The objectives are know that rotational relationships are analogous to translational relationships. So what we have learned for translational motion, we can derive the same thing. There are the same set of relationships for a rotational motion to understand. The net torque on a body affect the rotational motion of object. Be able to determine the net torque and angular acceleration for a rigid body. Angular acceleration is directly proportional to net torque, so this is very similar to rotate. Um, translational acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. So let's take a look at this picture. As this. Um, the rigid body rotate around the z-axis. So you uh, instead of figure, figuring out the whole torque, it's harder. Let's take a look at a little particle in this rigid body. On this particle, because uh, this particle, this whole thing is rotating around the z-axis, so the particle is rotating around the z-axis. And uh, as a matter of fact, all the particles must have the same acceleration because the object is rigid. Let's analyze the force acting on this M1. The force can have three components. The force can have the uh, tangential component, can have the radial component, and it can have the uh, Z component. So in order for this uh, particle to rotate, the, par the particle must have a torque. The torque makes the object to rotate. So the acceleration is A tan equals to F1 tan, uh, A tan times M1 equals to F1 tan. So that's a tangential acceleration. Since tangential acceleration is related to rotational acceleration by this relationship, A tan equals R times alpha. That's what we learned in chapter 9. Now, we can substitute uh, F1 tan equals M1 times R1 times alpha Z, because A1 tan equals R1 times AZ. If we multiply R1 on both sides, F1, uh, F1 tan times R1, why do I times R1? Because this gives us the torque, right? right? Tangential force times the um, lever arm gives you the torque, and that equals to R1, uh, M1, times R1, times AZ. This side times R1 becomes M1 times R1 squared, times alpha Z. Now, M1 times R1 squared, this is I. This is a moment of inertia. So the torque on um, point one equals to moment of inertia times alpha Z. That is just the torque on one particle. If we add all the uh, torques on all the particles together, we will have this. M1 R1 squared plus M2 R2 squared. And all the particles have the same angular acceleration. So we can take it off as the outside. And what is the whole thing over here? That is the eye. This is the moment of inertia for the whole object. So the sum of the torque on the whole object is the moment of inertia of the whole object around alpha z, around the uh, axis of z times alpha z, rotational acceleration. So rotate, this equation is very similar to F equals to MA. So this is F, this is M, this is A. So that's analog of Newton's second law. There's four things uh, to note in this equation. First, the equation is valid only for rigid body. So we have to assume all, ob all the particles must have the same acceleration. So if the body is... is uh, um, fluid, then this, this equation will not hold. Since we use A tan equals R times alpha Z, alpha Z must be measured in radians per second squared, because if we use Newton's 
uh, a has to be meters per second squared. So alpha has to be in radians per second squared. Next, all the internal torque add to zero. So when we add this together, the sum of the torque is only include the external force produced the torque. All the internal has to be zero. So this sum in this equation includes only the torques of the external force. Next one, often important external force acting on the body is its weight. So uh, we assume that all the weight is concentrated at the center of mass of the body to get a correct torque about any specified axis. Let's take a look at this uh, example. So a cable is wrapped several times around a uniform solid cylinder that can rotate about its axis. I think we did this question before in last chapter. So the cylinder has a diameter 0.12 meters and mass of 50 kilograms. The cable is pulled with a force of 9 newtons. Assume that cable unwinds without stretching or slipping. What is its acceleration? So what is cable's acceleration? Well, cable's acceleration is A10. A10 equals R times A red. And A red equals the net torque divided by I. So we know the force, we know the lever arm, the force is 9 newtons, the lever arm is 0.6 meters. So we can find the torque. And since we know this is a solid cylinder, so we know it's I, I for solid cylinder is one half MR squared. So we can find alpha, the rotation, angular acceleration, of the disk. Once we find angular acceleration of the disk, we can find a tangential acceleration of the disk. The tangential acceleration is the <clears throat> acceleration of the cable. So from here, alpha z equals to the torque divided by i. Torque equals f times r. And i is mr squared over 2. This is because the force is tangent to the circle. So the the lever arm is R. So that gives you 2F over M times R. Substitute all the numbers. Alpha Z equals to 6 radians per second squared. And A equals to R times alpha, which give you 0.36 meters per second squared. Next example. So this is also we have learned from last um, chapter. We wrap a light flexible cable around a solid cylinder with a mass big M and a radius R. The cylinder rotates with negligible friction about a stationary horizontal axis. We tie the free end of the cable to a block of mass M and release object with no initial velocity at a distance H above the floor. As the block falls, the cable unwinds without stretching or slipping turning the cylinder, find acceleration of the block, uh, the block of mass M. So let's take a look. Uh, what are the forces acting on a cylinder? There is the tension from, the cab uh, from that cable. Then there is um, gravity and there is normal force. We know normal force and gravity, they do not produce torque because they pass the center of rotation, the lever arm is zero. So the only force produced the torque is this tension. So we can write the equation for the cylinder. Uh, the equation for the cylinder would be net torque equals to I times alpha. Net torque is T times R because the force T is tangential to, to the um, cylinder. So R would be the lever arm. So T times R equals I times alpha. Now this alpha is the rotational acceleration. So alpha times R is A10. A10 would be the tangential, the acceleration of the block. Now on the block, there are two forces, mg and T. The net force between these two forces equals to M times A, little m times A. And that A is A10. So A10 equals to R times alpha. So that, that's the relationship. So essentially you have three equations. The first equation is for the block. The second equation is for the cylinder. 
And here is another equation for the acceleration between the alpha and a. So alpha equals a y over r. A y is the tangent uh, is the acceleration of the block, and alpha is the angular acceleration of the cylinder. So that's the relationship. Uh, let's take a look. We substitute i for the cylinder is one half m r squared. And uh, alpha is a y over r, so we can solve t equals one half m times a y. Now we substitute this t in the first equation. We can solve for a or a y that equals to g over m one plus big m over two m. So this a is the same as a y. Just forgot the subscription here. Okay, so a equals to that. This is acceleration of the block. So as you can see, this acceleration is less than g. Well, that's it's supposed to be. It's supposed to go downward because we assign downward as a positive y direction. And it's less than g because it's not free falling because the rope is kind of like pulling it up. We also know from here the tension is not um, equals to mg. Tension is actually less than mg. Let's take a look at this uh, problem. So this figure shows a glider mass M1 that can slide without a friction on a horizontal air track. It is attached to an object of mass M2 right over here by massless strain. The pulley has a radius R and moment of inertia I. So pulley is not frictionless anymore about its axis of rotation right over here. So when released, the hanging object accelerates downward. The glider accelerates to the right, and the string turns the pulley without slipping or stretching. Rank the magnitude of the folding forces that act in during the motion in order from largest to smallest. Let's take a look. On M2, there's force M2G and T2. Since the object is accelerating downward, so M2G has to be bigger than T2. Now let's take a look. Since this uh, um, pulley is rotating clockwise, if it's rotating clockwise, T2 has to be bigger than T1. You have to have a net torque going downward clockwise. So T2 has to be bigger than T1. So in order for the hanging object of mass M2 to accelerate downward, net force on it must be downward. So M2G has to be bigger than T2. In order for the pulley to have clockwise angular acceleration, T2 has to be bigger than T1. So the answer is M2G greater than T2, greater than T1. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.